Percy Harvin is now a New York Jet. What does that mean for fantasy owners, and what can we expect out of the Seahawks and Jets offenses going forward? We've got our busts and sleepers for Week 7, and we'll be answering your questions from YouTube and Twitter. It's all on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwid, and today I am joined by my buddy Paul, also known as I Pull Up To The House. If you're a Madden fan, you've probably seen him streaming on Twitch, and he actually won the Madden 25 Ultimate Team Tournament that I hosted toward the end of the year. But today, he's here to talk fantasy football and give you guys the help you need to dominate your league. So first things first, man, uh, do you think you could give the listeners kind of like a quick explanation of who you are, how long you've been playing fantasy football, that kind of stuff? Yeah, hey, what's going on, y'all, first and foremost? Um, I've been doing fantasy for about, I want to say, six, seven years. It was something I got into when I was in college. I had no idea anything about fantasy football. And uh, somebody invited me to join a league, paid like 20 bucks to get in, and just going off my knowledge and what I've seen from other teams in the past, picked a nice squad. I won, and it just it, it's been it's been fun ever since. So I, I love it, man. So you you started fantasy football, you won your first year, and then you just fell in love with it, like we all oh, do. Man. Most definitely, yeah. <laughs> I thought I a loss, I probably would have liked it, you know, even more because I'd have just jumped back in trying to get better the next year. So. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So now it's time to put you to the test oh, on your nice. knowledge for fantasy football, man. <laughs> Percy Harvin to the New York Jets. What do you think about that from a fantasy uh, standpoint? I mean, are we are we liking Percy Harvin less, more now? What do you think? I don't know. In my personal opinion, I've never had you know the most admiration for Percy Harvin as a fantasy player. He does a lot on the field. He affects defenses in so many ways in real life. But then yes. his production on the field has never really been as such, in, in my opinion. He had one really good season where he was uh, maybe eight games in and had close to 800 yards and a bunch of touchdowns and was kind of a front runner for MVP until AP just went bananas and tore the league up. But I've never been a Percy guy. I think him going mm-hmm. from a pretty good offense, you know, they're, they're still kind of rudimentary in a lot of things they do, to right. just to just a dumpster fire in in, in New York. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't I don't like his prospects. They have Eric Decker, they have Amaro who, who drops everything, but they still give him a ton of targets. And they're also a run heavy team, so they don't. I think they're going to deploy him in a lot of different ways, but it won't really, in my opinion, of course. I don't think it'll translate to, to more success fantasy wise. Harvin's had maybe one good game just from watching, and that was mm-hmm. against Washington when he scored three times, but had all three times called back by penalty. Just just the right. worst the worst case of luck I've ever seen, but. I don't really see him as that kind of fantasy guy. And people were taking him really early in a lot of leagues. I was doing mock drafts for They were drafting him so early. And it's it's all about his his hype, his potential. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't see it. I mean, and he got paid a, you know, a lot of money, a lot oh, yeah. of money to play yeah. 10 games and then get traded. He's uh, He didn't even play 10 games. Yeah, not he? even. <laughs> I don't think so. He might have made appearances in 10 games, but he didn't yeah. finish them. I, I know that. Yeah. I mean, that might include the playoffs that, I mean, obviously played in each of their first games for Seattle, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to suck for people that own Percy Harvin because he's going to have missed his first bye week. Then he's going to miss this week's game and, and the Jets still have a bye week coming up. So he's actually going to miss three games due to non-injury related things. And that's just crazy for a guy like Percy Harvin, who should be injured constantly, but, (laughs) um, (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I, I look at it like this. I, I definitely hear where you're coming from. It, the offense is significantly worse overall, in my opinion. Um, but I kind of like what I saw out of Geno Smith on Thursday Night Football. Um, I think that was the best we've ever seen of him. And that's not to say, of course, that he's going to keep that up or anything. But yeah, you know, now he's got a new target. <laughs> And I kind of like the fact that he's in an offense that has another receiver opposite him. Because on the Seahawks, Doug Baldwin was the best guy that they had probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just it didn't really translate into much because the defense, like when, when they played the Cowboys, the Cowboys shut him down. He touched the ball six times and had negative one total yard. 
they knew exactly when the ball was going to him. Now, like you mentioned, they have other targets in the New York Jets offense. And granted, like I said, it's not as good of an offense overall. They're not going to score as many points. But I actually think there's an opportunity for Percy to touch the ball more in this offense because I think that Rex Ryan is going to make it a game plan type of thing. He's going to say, look, we just traded for this guy. My head is on the line this year. If we don't make yeah. the playoffs, if we don't make a run here at the end, I mean, they're looking real bad right now for a chance to make the playoffs. They have to make a splash like this to save his career potentially. Yeah, so I, I kind of like his prospects a little bit in the in the Jets offense. Like you said, I've never been a big Percy Harvin guy. I've never believed that he should be going as high as he does. Not only because I don't think that he stays healthy, but also I think that his production on the field, like you mentioned, is a little bit overrated. Oh, so, yeah. So my, my personal opinion on him, uh, like you said, I, I think that uh, hit for, for where I was on him, I think that his value is higher. Although I do believe, though, that he's still probably going to be overvalued by a lot of people. So, you know, it's kind of dependent on, you know, where people are in your league that own Percy Harvin, if you should be going out there and targeting him. But the real question here necessar- isn't necessarily about Percy Harvin himself, but it's more about the offenses. So, obviously, the Seahawks lose a playmaker. Now, a guy that really hasn't made plays so far this year, but a perceived playmaker, at least a threat on the field. Well, the Jets gain one. Do you think that any of any of the other players in these offenses take a step up as far as their fantasy values go? I think this can do uh, nothing but uh, but help Eric Decker. Just the idea of Percy being out there, taking mm-hmm. all the intermediate to short routes and yep. clearing things up down there. That, that does open things up for him because they didn't have it that does. kind of player on their team. As far as Seattle goes, I mean, that, that offense is still going to be very run-heavy, very uh, read optiony, you know, just a, a, a lot of misdirection and things like that. And they've got young right. guys already on the team. You know, they've got Javon, they've got Jermaine Curse. You know, they yes. they they've got guys on the team already that yep. that can contribute the same way as Percy, not with the same speed, uh, mm-hmm. field vision, all that. But they can get you know eighty to ninety percent of what he was doing for ten percent of the cost. So that's that's kind of why they did it. Plus, I heard he's kind of you know a jerk in the the locker room, so it kind of helps him out. Should improve morale amongst the team and and all that good stuff. So I think their offense can can only get better, to be honest. I mean, now they don't have to kind of force feed Percy as much as they were because they're not paying True. a guy sixteen to seventeen million dollars. So now they can just you know do what they want to do. Let Russell Wilson continue to, continue to flourish as one of the top quarterbacks in the game, and uh, I think that improves. You know, this this does nothing but help Marshawn get more carries since they're not handing the ball off on jet sweeps, you know, every other play now. It should, you know, Doug Baldwin owners can, he could be a very solid flex option now, you know, just to keep him around the lineup in deeper leagues. It it only helps. So I think both teams benefit. And the only one that really kind of suffers is Percy himself because now he's going from, from Wilson who's, you know, an upper crust of the league type quarterback to, to Gino who despite, you know, just went off. Uh, against the Patriots and their defense. Don't get me started on that defense anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> right. But now now he's going to Geno, which may be a little bit more difficult. So I think yeah. the only one that suffers is Percy. Fair enough. I can definitely see where you're coming from on that. So um, that's about how we feel about the whole Percy Harvin thing. I mean, there's going to be differing opinions on this, and it's really going to depend on how we see him used once he goes to the Jets. And, you know, we'll have to temper our expectations for now and, and reanalyze once we see what he looks like in a Jets uniform. Yeah, and but, let, me, let, me, let me preface everything I'm saying. I'm not saying if you have Percy, just drop him. I mean, I, I never do that. <laughs> it's just, you know, if he was your, you know, your, your one or two because you kind of waited a while to get receivers and you thought a gem fell in your lap, I, I kind of – like you said, I, I would uh, you know kind of keep my my expectations in check. You know, going to a new team, mm-hmm. history shows, man. If you get traded midseason, things are not you know it's not a Madden video game. Get a new card, throw it in the lineup, and just do work. He has to learn a new system. They have to you know temper their new system to him. They have to cater to what he does and and all that stuff. So I, I don't know. And and Rex Ryan is not the offensive genius you know that you know is required to use a guy like Percy Harvin. So we'll we'll, we'll very, definitely very see true. what happens. I mean, I, I keep him. I wouldn't trade him. Actually, I might trade him. You know, try to you know get some of this uh, new car smell feel, and you know, and and just dish him out to somebody else. And just you know, if he goes off, then you know, you'll feel kind of bad about it. But if you get something good in return, and he doesn't turn out to be what you know what people think he would be in New York, then hey, you just made you know a steal of a trade. So I, I'd explore all options except cutting you know Percy Harvin. Sure. Well, let me ask you this, just as like a a gauge for how you feel about Percy Harvin going forward. 
Give give me an idea of a player that you think you would currently trade for Percy Harvin. So, like, for example, if I, um, er, er, excuse me, if you have Percy Harvin, what would you be willing to trade him away for? Like, for example, if I'm going to give you Anquan Bolden, would you give me Percy Harvin for the remainder of the year? Me, I would. I would okay. I would take that in a heartbeat. He's uh, he's, he's Cap's uh, safety valve. I'd make that move in a heartbeat. I'm not sure if anybody would actually offer that. But if they did, I would most certainly jump on that because, you know, you want you want the most definite thing. You don't want a, a boomer bust player in fantasy. That helps out. But once you get toward the playoffs and it, it really isn't the smartest thing to do to kind of expect or hope for, you know, three touchdowns that aren't called back in a game, you, you just don't want to do that. And as you can see, Cap's like a top seven quarterback right now in fantasy. I will most certainly take most of his targets. So All right. It, well, good, good idea. Well, there you go. All right, so now let's move on and talk about some of the questions that we have received on YouTube and Twitter. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments section below, or of course, you can always send them to me on Twitter at Clickwood TV. First one is from Beast Gone Gamer on YouTube, and he has a trade offer in a PPR league. So what he's going to be giving up is a guy we were just talking about. He's he would be giving up Colin Kaepernick, Marshawn Lynch, and T. Y. Hilton. Ooh. And he would be receiving Philip Rivers, Ben Tate, and Randall Cobb. So whenever we do a trade like this, I, I kind of like to break it down in terms of like, you know, what do I like better, this or this? So as far as the quarterbacks go, Colin Kaepernick, Philip Rivers, any thoughts on that? Well, um, you're going to get the dual threat capability of Colin Kaepernick. You're going to get a lot of highs, some lows, depending on yep. what the, what defense is facing him. Uh, at this point in his career, I don't think Cap is a must start in leagues. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been he's been lighting it up, uh, good games against a lot of teams, but he has the propensity to st- to stumble, to struggle yeah. at times against even even the worst defense. Like I think uh, Philadelphia did a good number of shutting him down uh, for a good majority of that game. Now, Philip Rivers, you're getting an MVP candidate, a guy who's not going to give you very many rushing yards or rushing touchdowns, but he has like the fifth highest quarterback rating of all time. He is yeah. on another level. I'm a Broncos fan. And I am most certainly afraid of facing this guy twice this year because he looks <laughs> phenomenal. And he's got good tar. He's got he's got options this year. You know, Michael, uh, Michael Floyd's been doing pretty good. Uh, you know, Gates is Gates. Royal. You know, Eddie Royal. Keenan yeah, Allen. It, just, it looks good, man. It just, yeah. It's a good idea. Yep, I, I agree. I'm, I'm going to go Phillip Rivers on that end of the trade. And then when we're talking about Ben Tate versus Marshawn Lynch, I think we're probably going to be both, both in agreement on that, that you want to go with a more stabilized guy like Marshawn Lynch, a guy who doesn't have the injury concerns. Uh, Marshawn Lynch definitely over Ben Tate. Now, as far as the wide receivers go, Randall Cobb and T.Y. Hilton, I think this is a lot closer than it was going into the year, but I'm still probably leaning toward Randall Cobb. What do you think? I don't know, man. I've, I've got T.Y. in a, a bunch of leagues, and this dude, he he is teetering that that wide receiver one status because he's he is. There, he's part of the, the the top offense in the league. I was reading something mm-hmm. on Grantland.com that the Colts have run like the equivalent of an entire game's worth of plays more than another team has. Their, wow. their pace is their pace is just outstanding this year. They're getting the ball yeah. up there, and they're they're moving around on so many targets. And T.Y. even though he finally scored his first three touchdown or his first touchdown of the year last week. He he's been very consistent. You know, PPR guy. He is a boss. Uh, yes, I got him. He absolutely and, is. And he's one of my top receivers on my team. I'm getting offers for him like crazy, and I just want to hold on to him. Cobb. He's got the great one of the greatest quarterbacks on the planet throwing it to him, but he's also got Jordy Nelson on the other side with Ty Hilton. He is the de facto number one guy. Reggie Wayne is going to be a safety valve for luck, but I think the reins have been kind of handed over to T.Y. They're doing a lot of things with him. He's not just that speedster from his rookie year. He's running a lot of routes underneath, yeah. across the middle, deep. The The dude is good. You get a chance to get T.Y. Hilton, I'd get him now because I think we're just kind of starting to scratch the surface of what he can do as a receiver. With Cobb, he does a lot of work too. They do they do some jet sweep stuff with him as well. They, uh, they, throw, it, they throw it around a lot, and Eddie Lacy has been just – awful this year so they're going to continue to pass the ball a ton because when you have Aaron Rodgers why not pass it 30 to 40 times a game usually good things happen but I, I'd kind of go with Andrew Luck's guy right now to be honest so this trade in my opinion I don't know whoever's getting Phillip Rivers back you're you're the one that's 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 winning the deal to be honest because Rivers is great 
And he he's a league winner. He's he's a guy that can go out. And their schedule is cheese the rest of the year. They have a bye <laughs> still, but they still play. You know, a, a couple soft defenses. They have my my Broncos, who aren't the greatest on defense, but you know, we we get the job done. I mean, that, that's neither here nor there. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely. You, you still have you still have a lot of targets out there, guys. You know, Malcolm Floyd, Keenan Allen starting to kind of heat up a little bit. Antonio Gates, they still got Ladarius Green. You know, they've got the running back Brandon Oliver, who we'll talk about in a little bit, who can. He kind of reminds me of a mini Sproles, and he comes out of the backfield catching the ball as well. So Rivers is just – he's slinging it, man. Go ahead and get him yeah. now You know, while his value is still – you know, it's still pretty high, but it can get even higher after the next slate of games he's got coming up. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think what it really comes down to here – I mean, obviously, if you're really thin at running back outside Marshawn Lynch, then I'm probably not making this trade just because mm-hmm. – you need to make sure that you have consistency at your running back position and that Ben Tate doesn't get hurt and then you're starting, you know, mm-hmm. Storm Johnson next week. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. But all things in a bubble here, I'm going to go with the side that's getting Phillip Rivers, Randall Cobb, and Ben Tate just because, I, mm-hmm. like you said, I like the consistency of Phillip Rivers. I think Randall Cobb's still going to be a high producer in the Green Bay offense, although I'm a little bit disappointed with the no- total number of catches that he's making. He's making them count with touchdowns. So, yep. you know, you can't really mm-hmm. complain too much. So next question is from 37 with Bill Dog on YouTube, and this one's just a quick one. He wants to know, who do I start at flex this week, Delaney Walker, Jeremy Hill, or Bernard Pierce? And, uh, you know, normally I would not really entertain a guy like a tight end being mm-hmm. your flex, but given the fact that your other options are guys who are not likely to be the lead dog in their backfield this week, I might go with Delaney Walker. What do you think? Sorry about that. Yeah, I will most certainly go with Delaney Walker. He's playing like a top five tight end this year, getting a lot of targets in a very bad offense. That running game yep. is awful. Uh, they've got Charlie Whitehurst starting, and <laughs> that's just uh, no <laughs> Yeah, bueno. it hasn't been good. It hasn't been <laughs> no good. No bueno when it comes to, to, to Charlie Whitehurst. If you got a yeah. bad quarterback or a, or a backup quarterback, for that matter, you always want to get their tight ends because that's always the safety valve. That's that's yep. uh, a phrase I use often. You know, when I when I draft my players, who, who's that safety valve on each – on each team. I talked about Colin Kaepernick's safety valve. Uh, I've talked about, you know, like a guy like Joe Flacco would always go to Dennis Pitta. You know, you got to find those guys who just always get the ball thrown their way. So I'd most yeah. certainly go with Delaney Walker. Jeremy Hill's a backup. You know, you're hoping for a Giovanni Bernard injury in order to get him in the lineup. And then I don't even know who the other guy – I mean, I don't – It's the other guy's not even worth mentioning. It's not even – Yeah, Bernard Pierce. Yeah, um, Bernard Pierce yeah. is a backup. He's behind – uh, Tally Farrow, I think his name Tally is. Tally Farrow and, and Justin and, Forsett. And Justin Forsett is playing like a top yeah. 15 back this year as far as fantasy production. So it's not even yeah. close. Go ahead and throw Delaney in there and get those 10 to 15 points at best and, uh, and right. call it a day. All right. Next question comes from Beast Hunter 2347 on YouTube, and he asks, I'm in a PPR league, and I want to know what you think I should do with Keenan Allen. Should I drop him? Should I try and trade him? What do you think that this guy should do here? Well, you, you never you never want to drop, you know, a rising kind of talent like Keenan Allen because you saw what he did in the last 10 to 12 games of last year. He lit the league on fire. And like I said uh, earlier about Phillip Rivers, he's he's on a, a crazy pace. You want to you want to keep up with, with his targets and just make sure you, you hold on to him. If you can get a decent offer for him, don't take like Bishop Sankey for him or something. Keep right. him and, and kind of wait it out. If you absolutely have to, make a deal that works for your team, fill a need, but in, under no circumstances, depending on what size league you're in, 8, 10, 12, 14-man leagues, just hold on to him. Do not cut him because if somebody else signs him and he uh, he ends up doing work for somebody else, you're going to feel like an idiot. So uh, you, you never want to <laughs> exactly. cut a guy. You never want to cut a guy who, who who's uh, has the potential to, to, to do big things. So I, I would hold yeah. on to him, give him a couple more tries. If not, then you bench him. And then uh, kind of shop them around, you know, try to talk them up to other guys in your league and, and, and make a move. But do not get rid of them. I promise you it, will, yeah. it won't be worth it. I agree. Uh, although he has been off to a slow pace this year, I do think that he turns it around for the remainder of the year. Um, he was such a reliable target for Philip Rivers last year, and we saw this at the beginning of last year as well. Eddie Royal started off as legitimately like a top five wide receiver for the first six games of the year, and then he completely trailed off to the point of being irrelevant for fantasy, and that's when Keenan Allen stepped up. Now, I hope that we don't see that being a continued trend over the course of his career, but there's really no reason to think that Keenan Allen and won't continue to get targets, that he won't be continuing to be productive in the offense, and that he won't turn his season around. So definitely hold on to him this year. 
Next question comes from Jason Kirk on YouTube, and he has another trade question in a 14-team PPR league, so a little bit deeper than your average league, and it also mm. involves Phillip Rivers. He would be giving up Phillip Rivers, Fred Jackson, and Reggie Bush, and he would be receiving Le'Veon Bell and Nick Foles. So, I think if we're redrafting right now, Le'Veon Bell is the top guy that's getting drafted in this dra- in this group of guys here. He's uh, he's most certainly up there, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe not the first guy overall, but certainly the group uh, out of these five guys that we're talking about in this trade, I think he probably goes in the first round and everybody else is probably third round or later. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that that's a major thing on that side of the trade. Now, Nick Foles has been a little bit disappointing this year. He has certainly been up and down. I but do you like do you like his opportunity to turn things around? And, and if you do, I think you're probably doing this trade, right? Uh, to be honest, I, I kind of would do the trade. Fred Jackson's in a shared backfield. He's clearly yeah. outplayed C.J. Spiller. But yeah. you never know. Doug Marone is kind of uh, an idiot, I guess, uh, their head coach. <laughs> he, he does just the weirdest things with uh, with their running game. They want to run C.J. Spiller, the small guy, inside and take the older guy and run him outside. They just don't know what they want to do. So yeah. um, Fred, Fred Jackson, uh, his value probably won't get any higher either. I would most certainly try to look to deal him uh, and get yeah. something good. Le'Veon Bell is a boss. I had him last year as a rookie. As a rookie, he was, an, he was a running back one. So, I mean, right. this year, he, it's, it's nothing, no different. He's like number two or three in points and standard scoring. He uh, receives the ball to the backfield. It's PPR. Uh, I, I would more certainly make this trade. Uh, Nick Foles, yeah. I think they have a good chance to turn it around because Shady looked phenomenal in the Sunday night game against the yes, Giants at the offensive line. Got it going. They're still going to get Jason Kelsey back pretty soon. They just got Lane Johnson back. The running game is going to be there. Uh, Jordan Matthews has ascended into a, a, a solid wide receiver two or three spot. Um, Jeremy Macklin's a wide receiver one this year just by sheer volume. I think Nick Foles could turn it around. They're going to have a good slate of games on their schedule as well coming up. You know, the Cowboys of the world, the Redskins, all those teams that aren't, you know, defensive stalwarts, you know, even though they're, you know, somewhat decent, Foles should have a good chance to, to put up some good numbers on a few different teams. So I would make that play uh, in a heartbeat, to be honest, to get Le'Veon Bell. I'm, all, I'm, I'm a big guy who loves to use multiple running backs. I want a running back in my flex as much as possible just because the opportunities are, are limitless when you have a running back out there. They can receive. They can run, they can score, you know, as opposed to a tight end or a receiver who can just catch the ball, maybe get lucky, get a touchdown. You know, the the volume's not there as much as with a running back. So I'd make this deal uh, in a heartbeat, despite giving up, you know, a a top three quarterback in fantasy this year in Phillip Rivers. All right. Yep. Completely agreed on that one. I I definitely am making this trade. I'm getting Le'Veon Bell in return. I I love the option there. Uh, And the fact that Reggie Bush has been injured, I think, is also going to make this a significantly easier trade. Yeah, we didn't even talk about Reggie Bush. (laughs) Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I I love Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush, I have such a man crush on him. But the fact is, is that the guy's never healthy. He's never been healthy over the course of his career. There's no reason to believe that he'll stay healthy. And he's splitting a backfield at best. Um most people came into the season expecting that Joyke Bell was going to take the role here, at least get the you know the sixty end of the sixty forty, but uh, you know you never really know with this Detroit backfield, and that's what can be so frustrating about it. So I like the consistency that Le'Veon Bell gives you, and I think that Nick Foles can ascend to be you know a top eight quarterback. Philip Rivers mm-hmm. probably going to be a top four five quarterback for the remainder of the season. So obviously I like Rivers better than Foles, but I don't think it's anywhere near as significant of a drop off as it is when you go from Le'Veon Bell to the combination of Fred Jackson and Reggie Bush. Mm-hmm. So. All right, next question comes from David Crowley on YouTube, and this one I think is kind of interesting because it takes into account the fact that this guy is currently 5-1, and one. okay? So he's sitting there at probably at the top of his league, and he's in the situation where he has Calvin Johnson on his roster. So he is being offered a trade to give up Calvin Johnson, James Starks, and Alan Hearns, and he's going to receive Calvin Benjamin, Marcus Colston, and Pierre Thomas in return. So... You know, I think obviously you're getting the rookie there, Kelvin Benjamin, who's looked very good. Marcus Colston has kind of been disappointing this year. Pierre Thomas certainly up and down. But the major thing to the, about this trade for me is that I don't think it's a trade you need to make when you're five and one. Now, if you're two and three, I think I'm more likely to make this trade. What do you think? See, I, I most certainly agree. You, a guy like Calvin, he can come back from this injury that he's been going through. And drop forty the first game out, and then right. you have him along with the rest of your five on one squad, 
and it just makes sense to hold on to them. To be honest, you're five and one for a reason. Unless you got really lucky and won some seventy nine to sixty games or something that you didn't <laughs> you didn't deserve to win or whatever. But more yeah. often than not, you probably had a good team. You're stacked already, and you got Calvin on the bench injured. So what I would do, I keep Calvin unless somebody makes me a godfather offer that fills needs on my roster. And then once Calvin comes back and you're at full strength, you're going to win the league. It's, I mean, it's it's that simple. They're going to sit Calvin out probably until his bye and after the yeah. bye as well. And when he comes back, he should be close to 100%. And if he's not, you're still going to get 80% of Calvin, which is better than maybe 90% of all the receivers in the game. And uh, you got Stafford, who loves him, some Calvin Johnson. You yes. keep Calvin. Do not get rid of Megatron. It will bite you in the you-know-what, I promise. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just to let you know, too, I actually saw a report earlier today uh, that said Calvin Johnson is 50-50 to play this week. Exactly. So... Mm -hmm. Keep them. I'm I'm not believing that. <laughs> um, the other thing, though, too, is that unfortunately, I almost hope that he sits out this game because I want him to get healthy. If I'm a Calvin Johnson owner, I don't want a 60% Calvin Johnson. Now, granted, 60% Calvin Johnson is still better than the vast majority of NFL receivers, but Very true. if he it, it extends that injury, and that's what we've already seen happen with this thing. It should have been already taken care of. But uh, I think the coaching staff has pushed him a little bit too much. I'm sure that he's telling them he can go, and then he's just not able to. But um, I, in my opinion, you got to keep Calvin Johnson here. He's definitely going to turn it around. When he gets back, he's going to be a top five wide receiver. This guy is ridiculously talented. So sure keep him. Is. Keep him. All right, next question comes from Joseph Martinez on YouTube, and he asks, I need two of these three re receivers. Guy we talked about earlier, T.Y. Hilton is up against Cincinnati. Andre Z. Johnson, yeah, Andre Johnson at Pittsburgh, <laughs> and Anquan Bolden at Denver. I'm I'm completely in agreement. You're starting Ty Hilton right now. He's Ty red hot. Is, Ty is a lock in that heavy. That they're a very pass heavy offense. I mean, you yeah. got Trent Richardson at running back. He stinks. And um, Andrew Luck is just a boss. He keeps looking for him. Some uh, there's a stat out there. Ty has gotten at least six six receptions in every game this year. That's six points in PPR wow. right there. Plus his yeah. yardage. It, it's it's not fair for a guy to be that good, and he hasn't even scratched the surface of what he what he can do for that offense. Keep right. him now. The other two, that's a very interesting uh, a very interesting matchup for for both of them. Pittsburgh just is awful. They bench yes. their uh, they they bench their twenty six million dollar corner uh, Cortez Allen. So I mean that's going to be a chance for for Andre to feast as well as DeAndre Hopkins if you own him as well. But Anquan Bolden against the Broncos, I, I'm I'm a Broncos fan. And I know I, I know how we how we operate. We get a lead. We kind of go into that Madden, you know, prevent defense and let teams just build up <laughs> yeah. yardage on us and, and whatever and hope to stop yeah. in the red zone. I think Anquan is a safer play. Andre Johnson's he's got Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. I mean, it's enough said. It's just it's okay. not the best situation for him. And I feel bad for him because he's a Hall of Fame you know, that kind of caliber player. He's been great yes. since he came out of the U in like 02. He's been good for years, but he's never had that quarterback. Matt Schaub, David Carr, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, Sage Rosenfels. He's had just a smorgasbord of terrible QBs. And uh, I think, you know, Kaepernick, like I said, he loves Anquan Bolden. They're going to get into a lot of situations, third and eight, where he's going to have to try to throw it to somebody, and it's going to go to him. Crabtree is just not that guy. I'm not a I'm not a Crabtree guy. He's always hurt, and he just hasn't been the same since Texas Tech. And and Quan Bowden's like they brought him in for a reason, and that's just to be the that that safety net for the young quarterback. He's going to look to him a lot this game. I think Anquan finishes with a crazy line of like six catches, or no, like eight catches for like 80 yards and maybe a touchdown. Hopefully in garbage time as my Broncos get the win. And, uh, and get you some nice points this weekend. So, T.Y. for sure, and then I'm going with Anquan Bolden. All right, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that as well. I think Andre Johnson's a guy that I would like to try and find a spot for in my lineup, but if I can only go with two of these guys, T.Y. Hilton's definitely the, the number one, and then I'm going to go Bolden as well because I just think that the high-end potential here is better. So, final question that we have from a, a – comment in the youtube section uh it's from and i apologize if i butcher your name here because this one's brutal for me aditya kalashikar is what uh, i'm gonna go with i wouldn't even try it <laughs> yeah <laughs> ak my friend ak on youtube he asks do i start ronnie hillman against san francisco this week or eddie lacy against carolina both these guys have had some up and down games so far 
Obviously, Ronnie Hillman's been working behind Monty Ball. He looked very good this past week, but San Francisco's defense is no joke, man. What do you think about this? Uh, I'm one of those guys who is going down with the ship with Eddie Lacy. I mean, if you took him in the first round, you have to play him against whoever. He has to be a must-start because if he goes off for the 30 he did against the Vikings and you benched him, you're going to feel like a tool, so you might as well just play him. Ronnie Hillman against an elite defense, even without you know, possibly Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, it doesn't matter. They're so good uh, everywhere, like, with the exception of the secondary, in my opinion. You, you can't play Ronnie Hillman. I mean, he's he'd be a solid flex PPR option because I think Manning's going to be under duress sometimes, you know, yeah. trying to get that touchdown record. So you might dump off a few passes to him. But I don't think uh, more than eight points can be expected out of Ronnie Hillman. He's not getting 100 yards. I know that for, for a fact. He's not going to get yeah. 100 yards because we struggle to do that, you know, while we're in the lead against the Jets. So. I don't right. think it's a, an elite defense like uh, like the 49 ers So you you, you got to go with Eddie Lacy. You start him. You hope that can, that Carolina continues to just and they're they're down with their tailspin from their defense of last year. They just look so much worse. You know, too many free agents gone, retirements. They just don't look the same on defense. Plus, Keekley's been you know off the field a few times just for injuries. Uh, I, I'm going I, I'm going with uh, you know, I, I can't I can't go Ronnie Hillman. I can't, even though I'm a yeah, Broncos. Yeah, you got to go with Eddie Lacy. You yep. got to go with Eddie Lacy. Yeah. Eddie Lacy, like you mentioned, the first-round pick, and yes, he's been disappointing, but he's also had good games. And that's the big thing here is that if, if he was coming out there and he was getting your, you know, Zach Stacy lines right now every single week, we would probably mm-hmm. be having a different conversation right now. But he isn't. The guy can still put up points, and the fact of the matter is that he's in an elite offense that's going to put points on the board, and there is a real opportunity for him to score multiple touchdowns yeah, in this game. A lot of, a so, lot of one-yard TD plunges yeah. are, are in his future just, be, yes. just you know, for sheer principle. You know? yeah. That's, that's the, kind of the, the Trent Richardson syndrome where you're kind mm-hmm. of good for nothing but one-yard TDs, but you're still getting points, I guess. I mean, it's not, it doesn't look good when you're watching it on film or you know at home watching the game but in fantasy you just see those 10 11 points pop up and you see him with 42 total yards you're like what happened but then he got that one yard touchdown so you're, you're yep. cool with double digits so you got to exactly. start throw Lacey in there and, and don't look back all right so our final segment that we do every week here before we head into the sunday games is that we do our busts and our sleepers for the week so let's start off with our busts of the week I'm going to go with a guy who is going up against your Denver Broncos, and that is Frank Gore. The Broncos have allowed the fewest rushing yards in the league this year, and and granted, that's a little bit skewed because they've already had their bye week and a few teams haven't, but the point is that they have been very, very good against the run this year. Only allowed 38 yards rushing last week, and guys, they only ran... Uh, the, the excuse me, uh, Frank Gore only ran for 38 yards this past week against the Rams, and the the fact is that he has been very very up and down this year. He had two 100 yard games, but the week before that, 10 yards in week three. <laughs> so Frank Gore, I, I know that people have this idea of him as being an every week like good running back. The the reality of the situation, though, is that that has not been the case this year. He's been not as up all. and down as almost anybody in the league. 49ers offense last week had zero points on the board with about a minute left in the first half against the Rams. And the Broncos defense is significantly better than the Rams. Now, granted, they're probably going to concede some points in this one because, uh, like he mentioned, they do tend to get into the lead and then they do tend to allow yards to accumulate, which then turn into, you know, a 10, 15 point swing at some points in the game. But the the point is that their defense is not going to sit and allow a 40 yard or a 40 point game to the, to the uh, San Francisco 49ers. They're a solid defense. (laughs) And the truth is that Frank Gore is going to be in a tough situation this game, because my opinion is that Peyton Manning breaks the touchdown record this week against a depleted San Francisco, San Francisco defense, and that's going to mean that they're going to have to put points on the board in bunches, and I don't see them relying on Frank Gore to do that. So, I, I agree, man. Frank Frank Gore has been very up and down. I never draft Frank Gore just because uh, I don't I don't know, man. It's just he's never been that guy for me. He can go off and get you twenty five one week and get you four the next week. It's just not something I want any parts of. 
because teams tend to sell out uh, uh, against the run, and, and they want to force Kaepernick to show them that, that he's a passer. So uh, yeah. I would do the same thing. It would be the same thing as playing like a mutt game and, and just run committing all day and forcing Kaepernick to beat you. I think the Broncos sell out against the run and, and force Cap to kind of throw it or use his legs and try to hunt him down with their, their fast pass rushers and, instead of letting their run game just get off. So uh, I'm so, in agreement with a guy like Frank Gore. So your guy is actually another guy who you think might struggle against a team that's going to sell out against the run. Who is it? That would be Brandon Oliver. He's been a huge, huge waiver wire pickup for a yep. lot of teams out there. I know you want to throw him in there as your flex or your running back too. And he he's he's earned it. I mean, he's he's done well, but he's played teams you know like the the Jets, the Raiders. Now he, he's 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 got a a bit of a, a tougher task. You know, the same team that shut down Tom Brady, who's looked phenomenal the last few weeks, by the way. And that's the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Chiefs coming off a bye, they're going to be fresh. They're going to have you know the Andy Reid's got like a crazy stat where he's he loses like one percent of the time. No, I'm I'm being facetious, but he doesn't. He rarely loses coming off a bye against anybody. Yeah. They're going to have right. time to prepare, and it's a divisional game. I expect them to sell out and try to force Rivers to to continue his hot his torrid pace of passing the ball, and they have a better chance of stopping rid of uh, stopping the run game than they do with Philip Rivers. So I I. I you know, I give it more of a chance of them uh, shutting down Oliver than you know to slow Rivers down. So they're gonna sell out on him, not let him get you know out of the backfield for 140 plus yards. I would uh, not saying I would bench him. I just think he's not gonna be a 25 point guy like he's been against the the, the crappier defenses of the league. So temper your expectations. Uh, if he gets you 10 points, you'd be happy because he's gonna have a tough matchup. All right, so. Give me your sleeper of the week then. Somebody who isn't normally going to be in your fantasy lineup, but might be a guy that might sneak into your lineup this week if you have bye week problems or injury problems. Sleeper of the week for me is a guy that actually won me a week. You know, I, I was the one that had to face Russell Wilson when he dropped like 46 the other night against uh, against the Redskins a few weeks back. And luckily, yeah. I'd already gotten my points from Austin Davis, quarterback for the St. Louis Rams. This there kid. You go. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as John Gruden and say he's the next Drew Brees, which is ridiculous. But the the kid, <laughs> he does not care. He will sling it. Interceptions, fumbles, they don't bother him. He comes back. He's just he's glad to be there. The guy's undrafted, you know, and he's just glad to be there. They have he, they have confidence in him. He trusts his receivers. Uh, Jared Cook, another guy I own in a couple leagues. He goes after him a lot. He throws to Brian Quick. He just makes plays. He's, he's very he's deceptively quick, uh, quick as well. And he, he gets you rushing yards. So the guy against Seattle, their defense has they're not the Legion of Boom this year. Uh oh. Sherman Sherman has looked uh, you know, not very Sherman esque. You know, their opposite corner, Maxwell's been hurt here and there. He's been getting targeted a lot and a lot of success has happened against him. Tight ends have gone off against this the, uh, the Seattle Seahawks as well. So if you're having trouble, if somebody's going to buy like a Nick Foles, go out grab a guy like Austin Davis. This guy's going to get you 15 to 20 points that you wouldn't have gotten from somebody like a Fitzpatrick or, or whoever else is laying around in your waiver wire. Go get Austin Davis and thank me later. Trust me, he's on my roster, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you somebody that I wouldn't pick up myself. The guy, he seems like the real deal. He he may not go out and win the Super Bowl for the Rams. He's going to bring them some wins though. I can guarantee that because the kid. He's just got it. I don't know. He makes plays. That comeback they had, that where they almost won it against us, uh, uh, Philly when they were down by like 30 points. He he just was poised and he made play after play in the second half of that game. And the kid is going to make noise. Plus, St. Louis's defense isn't that great, so they may get you know run out of the gym a little bit as far as uh, defensively get down by a couple right. touchdowns and be forced to throw the ball. And that's where fantasy gold comes in. That's that's where all the money's at. It's just garbage time points. They're going to yeah. play back. They're going to allow him to get a lot of dump offs, a lot of extra yak for his receivers, getting your getting your points, and uh, maybe some some garbage time TDs, getting you the fifteen to twenty you need to win this week. So Austin Davis, book it. The dude is good. Trust me. All right, man. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that this uh, this matchup against Seattle. If you just if I tell you that somebody's going up against Seattle, you're like, oh man, I don't know Seattle. They've been very good against the run this year, aside from the game against DeMarco Murray, but they were excellent against the run prior to that, but actually they're secondary. Like you mentioned, the Legion of Boom has been extremely disappointing this year, at least thus far. Now, I do expect them to turn it around eventually, but right now, they're not clicking on a, at, at their secondary level. So uh, I do think that there's a real opportunity for Austin Davis to have a nice game here and at least a serviceable fantasy game, something that's going to rank you in the top 12 or so at the quarterback position, which is really what you're looking for if you're on a bye or something like that with your normal quarterback. So my sleeper of the week, and this is the final sleeper of the week, we've got 
Isaiah Crowell at the mm-hmm. Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, normally I would never recommend a backup running back <laughs> because, you know, you just don't really go with a guy who isn't guaranteed to touch the ball. But the situation is a little bit different with the Cleveland Browns. Ben Tate's looked really good since coming back, but Isaiah Crowell is still getting touches. He ran for 77 yards last week on 11 carries and scored a touchdown. The Jaguars are giving up an average of 20 and a half fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. So that is not a good number. (laughs) When in doubt, play whoever you got against the Jaguars, man. Good things tend to happen unless they play for the Titans because they stink. But yeah. good things tend to happen if you play your players against the Jaguars. It just that's just the way it is. I mean, yeah. go for it. Crowell, he you know, and there's always that chance that Ben Tate comes up limp like he has throughout yeah. his entire career. And then Crowell ascends to, you know, legit running back two status just by sure volume. That team they they run a lot more than they pass. So if he's getting the touches, that old lines look great. They they always look good. They just I don't know. They always they've always had bad defenses. I've gotten them, I've gotten them down, and they had to rely on bad quarterbacks. But Brian Hoyer looks kind of legit. So you know they're keeping teams in check as far as just selling out against the against the run. Now they can actually do a few different things, and uh, Crowell could put up some numbers this week. Not saying from here on you're going to want him in your lineup, but against a team like Jacksonville, you, you got to play him to see what happens. Because if you have him on the bench and he goes for 20, just you know garbage time TDs or whatever. Then you're gonna you're gonna feel kind of bad. So he's a he's a very good uh, flex option this week. Yep. I, I'll most certainly throw him in there if I had him. So uh, plug him in there and, and give it a go. Yep, man. I'm I'm excited about Isaiah Crowell's prospects for this week and really for the remainder of the year. I actually kind of like him as a potential guy in your keeper leagues as well because. Terrence West has basically lost the job to Isaiah Crowell at this point. He was deactivated last week. And I just, you know, when you when you look at that type of a situation, it's like, look, Ben Tate is not going to stay healthy. He hasn't been able to at all throughout his career. He's already been injured this year. Mm-hmm. And honestly, they need somebody that has young, fresh legs. And I think that's what Crowell brings to the table for them. Like you mentioned, their offensive line has been very good. Now, it sucks that they are going to be without Alex Mack for the remainder of the year, but I still think that they're a very solid offensive line, even without him. And I definitely like his opportunity for the remainder of the season. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you all for tuning in. We do appreciate it. I want to thank Paul for stopping by onto the podcast today. I really do appreciate it. He gave some great insight, and I think that you guys are going to do very well if you listen to his advice. We hope that you enjoyed the show. We hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press the like button below and also press the subscribe button so that you can be updated when we put out our next episode. If you guys have any questions about your lineup for next week's games or if you have anything that you want to ask us about trades or any general fantasy football questions at all, make sure you leave that in the comment section below or tweet it at ClickwoodTV. If you guys are interested in getting my opinion as far as your lineups for this weekend's games, you can also tweet those to me at ClickwoodTV. Also, be sure to send a follow to Paul at I pull up to the house and that's a number two H a U S for the end. And that's going to be how you get in contact with him. Thank you again for stopping by Paul. I appreciate it, man. Good luck to everybody this weekend and be sure to check back next week as we do a review of this weekend's games here on the fantasy football swagger podcast. Thank you guys. Let me me say that this was awesome. I appreciate you guys letting me uh, come by and uh, share my, what I consider to be pretty good uh, fantasy knowledge, and this is awesome. Click with, uh, keep up the great work, you guys. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that follow button on Twitter for him, for myself as well. Subscribe to his channel. You're gonna get nothing but great content, whether it be Madden stuff, you know, whether it be fantasy, it does not matter. I enjoy what this dude's doing. I know you do too. So again, uh, let quick know if you uh, want me to come back again. I had a blast, man. I'm I'm doing this thing from my tablet. And it, it, it is it's awesome just to talk fantasy. I love it. I'm counting down the hours to the games and and I uh, can't wait. So you guys enjoy and, and good luck. Best of luck tomorrow on all the games, Sunday and Monday. Peace. Thank you again. Good luck this weekend. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye bye. <laughs>